All right guys, my lifting session is done and the gym was closing right after I finished lifting and posing. So Jason recommended an effort for me to save time and energy to just run out and come back like as far as I needed to go for my miss uh, session. So that's what I did. I have to say I'm so glad I did that because number one, it was more time efficient than either driving to one of my other gyms or driving somewhere else. Um, also, the weather is beautiful right now, so it was nice to just like have a breeze, have the sun on me. And also, I just kind of ran somewhere I've never ran before, so it was a nice change of scenery and it was really, really motivating. So it felt good and I got that done. So now it's time to go home and eat. Looking like a crazy person because my priorities when I get home are food and eating, but um, I wanted to share with you what I just ate. I actually already ate my protein, which was just, I had egg whites with one whole egg and for like more volume this week. So I'm not really, for peak week, we didn't really change up too much from what I'm doing, which is nice because what I've been doing is working. So I just want to add in a little bit more volume. So for breakfast with my egg whites, I made up high volume oatmeal. So my portion of oats. I heated on the stovetop with water and added in an egg white and some zucchini. And then I've got a tablespoon of peanut butter and some strawberries on there. So I'm about to dig into that. I thought I'd talk to you guys just for a minute to update you on one thing that's kind of stressing me out and bogging me down a bit, which sucks because everything else is going great, but I guess, you know, life isn't perfect. Stuff's always gonna come up, right? And I'm struggling to get this polygraph scheduled um, for the competition. Like, I've been going back and forth with the show promoter and like, I don't understand what the deal is. Like, at first it was scheduled for 6.30, which is the time of the athletes meeting, so I can't do that time. And then she said 10.45, which I'm not going to be there that early because I have a significant drive that morning to get there. And so, like, my tan's at 1.15, so my plan was to get there by, like, noon on Friday. Like, I don't know what else to do. Like, squeeze me in somewhere and just do my polygraph. Like, I'm not sure. So... I don't really know. I'm going to try not to let it stress me out too bad, but it's just kind of like lurking there like, well, what if I get there and like they don't let me compete because they won't let me do my polygraph. Like, you know, I'm, I'm getting there early as it is for the spray tan, so I don't want to be, I'm not going to get up at 5 a.m. the day before a show to drive to Boston. Like, it's just not happening. So, I don't know. Hopefully something will work out. I'll keep you posted. Other than that, I wanted to just say that like, I honestly feel like <clears throat> this, like today, we're on, today's Sunday, so I'm six days out. I feel like as of today, this is the best conditioning I've ever had. My best, like, entire package as it looks today. You know, like stepping on stage today, I know I've already accomplished what it, more than what I wanted to accomplish. Like, bringing a better package was, like, my ultimate goal, but... I just feel so good about how things are looking and the progress that I made. And I still have six whole days to like dial it in. And I know each and every session, um, everything I do for the next six days is just going to help perfect my package for how I want it to look on stage. And I'm just so excited to share that with you guys. And I can't wait to see how it looks myself, but I think you guys will be happy with what you see as well. Um, and it feels good to be like sitting here at six days out feeling like I could step on stage today and be happy with what I'm, you know, bringing on stage. And I know I said that like a few weeks ago too. So it helps because it doesn't feel like for peak week, like it doesn't, it's nothing like crazy stressful for me. And it really, you don't want peak week to be crazy stressful either. Like yeah, you might bump it up a notch with your uh, workouts. Maybe you dial it in a bit more with your uh, diet, depending on what you're doing. So um, for me to just kind of like cruise on in this week feels feels so good. Like I'm just really, really happy with how things are looking. Um, I was 106 pounds flat this morning. So um, I think that's a pretty good weight for me. Like to be on stage, I've competed anywhere between like 102 to 106. 
um, and I'd hope like I have a little bit more muscle this year like I definitely feel like I do I should so I'm like good to go like I'm ready to do this so I'm very pleased with that and for the most part relaxed and calm and you know very excited to compete so just gotta get this damn polygraph scheduled so I'm gonna eat my zucchini oats um, if you guys haven't tried these you should great for volume I actually prefer them I think colder so like I popped them in the freezer for a few minutes but like I do prefer like when I used to make these consistently I'd make them the night before and put them in the fridge and then eat them cold the next day. They're really good with like chocolate protein and like cocoa in there too. But for now this will do. This is heavenly. Mmm. I'm feeling so much better today too, you guys. Like I don't know if you can tell in my voice. I'm not as congested, which is nice because like running outside, I didn't think I was gonna be able to breathe at all out there. I was able to breathe really good and run really good. And I can sniff, like I didn't have to sleep all night with my mouth open. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely on my way to recovery. I took some echinacea yesterday, which reminds me I'll take that now. I'm supposed to take it with food, so I had picked that up as well because a lot of people swear by it. Take two twice a day. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take that now. I'm gonna fill up my water bottle, make sure I get enough water today. I'm gonna get this in now so I don't forget. I think that's all my updates. Overall, feeling really good and excited. Um, really enjoying my oatmeal. So. I'm gonna enjoy this in privacy. What's up guys? I wanted to do a little chat today for the vlog and talk about my purpose behind competing. I had a few people ask me that since I started the Driven Challenge and announced I was gonna compete, that people never really knew or understood why I started competing. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and a big reason why I wanna discuss it too because when you are in bodybuilding and competing, you always have to go back to your own why, why you're doing it and what your purpose is. And now that I'm entering peak week, it's still so critical that I keep that why strong because come show day with bodybuilding, you can't ever determine how you're gonna place or what the results are gonna be. So for me, my why is never to place a certain way. Um, my why for doing this competition is not to get, you know, first place or fifth place or anything like that. So it's good for me to kind of go back to it as I'm entering peak week and talk about why I do enjoy this sport. So I got into bodybuilding five years ago. And for me, a little history on my like athletics, I was never, I always kind of did a little bit with sports growing up, but come high school, I was not on a sports team. I didn't do anything like that. And I always loved fitness though. And I just kind of never really found my fit, I feel like with fitness. I didn't really, you know, baseball, soccer, whatever, like doing different things like that. I never really found my niche. And then I got into marathon running and running as I entered college. And with that, you know, I had set a goal to achieve with um, qualifying for the Boston Marathon. And once I did qualify and completed that marathon, it kind of felt like I didn't know what was next for me. And I am someone that always needs to have some kind of fitness goal because it's just what... It, it like fills my soul with happiness. It's never been something I felt like I had to do. I've never, you know, really, especially the older I get, I, you know, I do it to take care of my body as well. We all want to work out to look good, but it really takes care of my soul and my mental health. It really just makes me feel like a better person. And I've just always loved having some kind of goal to strive for. So something as big as the Boston Marathon and achieving it, I was just like, 
hmm, what's next? I need to do something more. And always had an interest in bodybuilding. And so that's around the time that I kind of shifted my goals into bodybuilding versus running. And I have loved it ever since and never kind of straight away from it. Um, I've taken time off from competing, but that love for competing is still there. And so this past year, I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna compete again. As you know, after turning pro, I had a rough year and I just didn't really know what was going on. To be honest with you, I felt lost. And in a way, I felt broken. Um, I felt broken just like not knowing my place anymore. Like I did not wanna just sign myself up to compete just to compete um, to lose weight or anything like that. Because clearly I was I struggled a little bit with not feeling good about myself, with gaining weight after my show. And the last thing I wanted to do or would ever encourage you guys to do is to sign up for another show just to maintain a set body weight. Because that will set you up for failure for a long time. Um, so I purposely didn't sign up to compete again. I wanted to figure out what was going on with me and and um, what my true passion was and if it really was still bodybuilding or not. And, you know, the time off I took this past year with just, you know, kind of going back to basics with my health, with my nutrition, um, with my workouts was just much needed for me and allowed me to just kind of work on me, work on self-love at any stage of my body. And so part of wanting to compete again was number one, just getting on a pro stage and making my pro debut. So that is part of it. Just to make the pro debut was, was really something that sounded appealing to me. Um, the second thing is too, after the year I had, I really wanted to take on this challenge since I felt like mentally I got myself to the best place possible in my life in terms of self-love and acceptance and you know doing things for me um, I just felt like I was in a really good place so you hear people say that and then they sign themselves up to compete again and immediately you know red flags go up or people get nervous like you know they don't want the same thing to happen again and for me I never it never even really crossed my mind that I was going to struggle like post show. And yes, I'm not at the post show yet, but for me, it was more so the challenge of doing this again, improving to myself. Not that I needed to prove it, but as I mentioned, for that period of time, I felt broken this past year. I felt like, what can I not? I'm a dietitian. Can I not even lose weight anymore? Can I not inspire people? And not to say you have to like inspire people through losing weight or competing. Um, I just felt really down for a long time. And so getting myself to a good place again, you know, I just wanted to have another challenge. And I just love, it's it's this simple. I do love competing. Like I love the sport. I know some people do it just to like do a cut and have that deadline and see what their physique looks like. And that's like fun to have as well. But I just truly love like knowing I'm gonna step on that stage, it drives me to work so hard in the gym. And that's the aspect I love the most is training hard in the gym and getting a little bit of competitiveness in me because sometimes I lose that when I don't have a goal in sight. So um, just being competitive and pushing myself in the gym to a place I've never been before and knowing that I was entering this prep in the best mindset possible. Um, you know, thinking about when I started prepping five years ago, I didn't know what the hell I was getting myself into. I had no clue. The diet was kind of like, uh, you know, I screwed up my diet a bunch of times, over cardioed, you know, there's, my preps have changed so much throughout the years. And entering this prep is just like the best mental space I've ever been. And I just, that challenge just gives me cold chills knowing that I came into this prep like ready to like kick some fucking ass, number one. And with that, never lose sight of the rest of my life. You know, like I've done a really good job this prep of not disconnecting from the rest of the world or my body. Um, I've been very mindful of like, 
if I'm going to prep, I'm going to do it the healthiest way possible. And so, you know, even on days that I had way more carbs, I still chose carbs that I felt like were the best way to fuel my body and to give me the most nutrition and antioxidants and things like that. And I never really tackled prep like that before. I never really cared as much. And this past year, because I spent so much time focusing on health and getting back to basics, that's remained strong within my purpose is thinking about my health and thinking about my body and how it like runs most efficiently. Um, so it was just really exciting to think about doing this prep being so physically and mentally in a really good place and to see what kind of outcome I could have. And with that outcome, I don't mean placing on the stage. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, like I feel like I'm entering peak week in the best conditioning I've ever had. And that doesn't necessarily mean like the lowest number of weight on the scale, right? It just means I feel like I am the most conditioned I've ever looked with six days left to dial it in. Um, and I don't, I really don't care how I place. It's not to say I'm not competitive and I'm not going to be a force to be reckoned with that on that stage because please, you know, I'm going to go out there and sass that shit up and it's going to look good. Okay. So don't get me wrong there. But what I'm saying is like the, you know, the feeling of I've already won is there and the feeling of next week when that comes and I'm not the same weight I am this week, I'm totally good with. I'm doing this prep to, to bring my best to stage day, but I'm, I've never once lost sight of the post-show experience. And I know, it's not to say I'm not going to be sad when it's done either, because this has been a really fun experience. But I have loads of other goals that I'm going to work on post-show. And um, just feeling like you guys know, you can see it in me. Like I'm just in a good place. I've been having a good time. I've been having fun and I've had the most successful prep yet. And with bodybuilding, yes, you know, there's a lot of downsides to it. And there's um, a lot of people that are really frowning upon people that compete right now and think it's a bad influence on people. And, you know, my purpose with these videos isn't necessarily to inspire anyone to compete. Like it's really not the point. Um, the point is when you, I, I think most people can relate to being in a place where they feel broken or lost and not sure where to go, whether it's weight loss or any other goal or anything in your life. So being able to like get yourself from feeling at such a low to working the hardest you've ever worked towards a goal and achieving it. And to me, that's kind of what bodybuilding gives me. It, you know, allows me to work harder each and every prep. I learn more about myself each and every prep. Um, push my, I, I like push myself to a place that I didn't even think was possible. And for me, that's so rewarding. Like not everyone needs that kind of reward in their life and everyone gets it in different ways. But for me, fitness has always been a way for me to feel um, like, I, it just feels normal and natural to me and the love I get from pushing myself and you know seeing what I can achieve it just it blows my mind and it creates a greater self-love I have for myself and that self-love has nothing to do with my weight my leanness how I currently look nothing to do with that you guys it has to do with setting my mind on a goal and a purpose and believing in myself, you know? So that feeling of believing in yourself is so, so powerful. And for me, bodybuilding does the trick. I've got like cold chills just talking about it right now. So, you know, with all that said, it's part of my purpose. It's part of my why. And, you know, I'm so excited to compete next weekend. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting me. And, um, like the great thing I can just say, because I'll probably look back on these videos like right now, like I look good for stage, but this isn't my favorite look for me personally. Like I like being probably like comfortably five to seven pounds heavier than where I'm at right now. And it feels good going into a show being like, yeah, I, I'm like kind of excited to gain a few pounds. Like it's tough for a lot of people to see the leanness slip away post show. Um, 
I don't know guys, I'm in a really good friggin place and I'm excited to share the stage today with you but also continue to share um, my goals in moving forward post-show too. So a little bit rambly but I hope you guys enjoyed and yes, competing's not for everyone. My YouTube is not here to inspire you to compete. I'm here to inspire you to reach for your dreams, reach for your goals, put yourself first because you deserve it. So I'm going to end the vlog here today, guys, so I can enjoy the rest of the day with my boys and have a little quality time. So hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.